Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. I felt sudden impulses to do things that I normally wouldn't be comfortable doing and I was speaking very fast. A young artist describes the onset of a mental condition known as bipolar disorder. Plus, a young man rediscovers his faith through music. We'll learn the steps involved in a sacred traditional Buddhist ritual. We'll find out how an Oahu Middle School is helping to restore an ancient Hawaiian fish pond. We'll learn the ins and outs of a biomass plant on Kauai. And we'll see how a family that races together stays together. All on this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No! Can do! We're here at H.P. Walden High School in the town of Wailuku on the island of Maui. Throughout this episode of Hiki no, you'll find out where students go to unwind in between classes and what they do during the limited downtime. On Baldwin High School's four-acre campus, students can be found hanging out under the iconic banyan tree, enjoying the air conditioning in the Wallace H. Fujii Library, or having a quick kanikapila session in the sterols for the good acoustics. At times, you can also find students socializing in classrooms, like the art room with Mrs. Sato, which is where the subject of our first story sought refuge when her life took an unexpected turn in the middle of her sophomore year. I really love doing art. It's something that I've done even before my diagnosis. It's really important for me to use as an outlet to express myself. This one was kind of fun. Karina Bhattacharya is 17 years old and has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder since November 2014. Bipolar disorder is a brain disorder that causes mood swings of mania or depression. My first episode, I wasn't really aware of what was happening. I thought that I was feeling fine and that other people were acting strange around me. So it had been a really stressful day at school. I had a problem with my, one of my friends and that was really bothering me. And then I just started acting very strangely and erratically. I felt sudden impulses to do things that I normally wouldn't be comfortable doing. And um, I was speaking very fast. No one could understand me really and that kind of frustrated me as well because I had that block of communication. Although Karina has gone through negative experiences, she continues her life by finding the brighter side of a dark situation. For instance, studies show that there might be a link between bipolar disorder and increased creativity. I definitely saw it as a shock. I wasn't really sure what was happening to me and I wasn't even sure what bipolar was when I first was diagnosed. But eventually I did see some benefits. Um, People with bipolar disorder are naturally more creative and intelligent, so I found that to be to my benefit. I could see everything the way it was, and I even started noticing small details. I, know, I noticed that my paintings became more vivid. I used new colors, and I was able to make a positive situation out of the negative one about being diagnosed. Art definitely represents me as an individual. I really enjoy painting other people and I like how I express myself. I noticed that my paintings are very individualistic and I've also noticed that in my paintings I like to experiment a lot and that just shows another factor in my personality. By using art as a way to cope, Karina has been able to advance through the difficulties of bipolar disorder and reach new heights. I'll definitely be creating more art in college. I noticed that it's a whole new community and a whole new group of people, so I hope to be inspired by the people I meet, and I hope that their personalities can be expressed in my artwork. As Karina prepares for college in the mainland, she copes with her disorder by painting away her thoughts and feelings. This is Catherine Swar from H.B. Baldwin High School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at HikinoCanDo. Aloha and welcome to Maui High School, located in Kahului on the island of Maui. One of the many locations on campus where students meet during their free time is at our school's music building. 
band and choir students often group together during morning and lunch recess to rehearse their pieces using their voices, instruments, and talent in creating music. In November of 2016, the marching band will be attending the annual Kamehameha Tournament of Bands on Oahu. Hikino students in our media class produced the following story about a recent Maui High School alumnus and how his personal, spiritual journey is helping him unite Maui's youth. One, two, three. If I were to describe unite in three words, it would be following God's design. Perfect. Let's try it again. Achieving such a vision was a big task for 18-year-old Mark Antonio, who was given the responsibility to contact local performers and organize the Unite concert held in June. Unite is kind of this organization where we aim at uniting the body of Christ. We unite and come together and change the youth of this community because there's been a lot of violence, there's been a lot of suicides, a lot of drug usage, and it's become a problem on this island. So that's what Unite pushes for. It's to make that first step, to make that first encounter with these kids. Reaching out to teenagers becomes a goal because then that's where you see the most violence. And that's where you see the most depressing stories. However, Mark had quite a journey before taking on this first step. I went through my own depression. I went through these suicidal thoughts. I experience what it's like to have, to want to kill yourself, to want to be on the edge where you're like, there's no point of me here. There's no one that loves me here. I should just go. There's no point in me being here anymore. And that's a very dark time. And a lot of teenagers experience that. For nights I was praying, like, let me find that purpose that let me be able to rest in just your love and just focus on that. Please give me hope again. Give me this hope that I've been wanting. Fortunately for Mark, his prayer was answered in an unexpected way. Then I get a call from the Maui County Baptist Association that, hey, we're thinking about putting on a concert. Let's put it towards the youth. Let's appeal to the youth. What do you think? Are you willing to oversee the whole project? And then God's like, yeah, this is where I'm going to make you feel loved again. So I called back the organization. I said, yeah, I'll take on the project. After answering the call, Mark went from feeling empty to having a lot on his plate. Responsible for gathering local bands for the concert, Mark found his purpose. But this is not a treasure I want to keep for myself, but I want to give that now it's kind of my mission to love on these kids give them hope, give them the same love. And my goal is to have that love keep going. This is Yasha Ronquillo from Maui High School for Hiki No. Up next, students from Pacific Buddhist Academy on Oahu take us through the detailed steps of an ancient Buddhist ritual. Oshoko, or offering of incense, is a daily practice in many Buddhist households. To Oshoko, Buddhists need a butsudan, or family shrine dedicated to the Buddha, incense, matches, charcoal, nanju, or the beads that keep practitioners mindful of the Buddha, and various other implements that are placed within it, including a representation of wisdom and compassion. Care should be taken when lighting the charcoal. Make certain to have an adult present. Then, place the charcoal in the bowl. Take a pinch of incense and sprinkle it on the charcoal. Put your hands together in gasho or the gesture signifying the oneness of Buddha and all beings. Take a deep breath. Take it all in. And bow deeply. Step back. Right foot first, then left. With feet together and hands at your sides, 
bow. Now you're ready to begin the day. Namo Amida Butsu. This is Casey Amato from Pacific Buddhist Academy for Hikino. Here at Melani Middle School, the students learn a lot, though sometimes they just need a break from all the craziness of school. Among all the places to go, some students go to the amphitheater to spend time with their friends. At Melani Middle School, the yellow track 7th and 8th graders go on many field trips, but the one that stands out the most is the trip to Mokoya Island. A traditional Hawaiian blessing, which allows students to step foot on Mokoya Island, starts off an unusual day for Mililani Middle School students. Mokoya Island is a small island located off of Keahi Lagoon near the airport on Oahu. This historical site was an ancient fishing area where there once were many fish ponds. Once a year, 7th and 8th grade students paddle to Mokoya Island for a day of work. We're just trying to perpetuate the history of this area, getting the kids to know the history before they come out and work the land, getting the kids conscious about um, taking care of the whole earth. What we like to focus on is Ikovamamua Kavamo Hope, which is on the back of our shirts. Uh, that means the future is in the past, so we have to look back at what you know our ancestors laid out for us. We're basically traveling in the canoe, so we're paddling in the wake of our ancestors and then we're walking the Aina. Mililani Middle School students have been coming to the island since 2009, doing everything from planting native plants they raised at school to clearing brush. We had help from the community to just clear this fish pond behind us, um, getting rid of the mangrove. Right now we're just trying to maintain the mangrove. Maintaining plants on the island can be a challenge. One of the problems with being on this island is it has no uh, natural fresh water. So part of the problems with raising plants here is sustainability and one of those items is the water that we need. It doesn't rain a lot out here but when it rains it storms, it pours. So um, we just have a little uh, water line coming in and we have to pay for that water. So this water is going to help us to water all of our native plants. The water catchment system was a great idea by um, Jenny Kurohara. She's actually Dr. Kurohara. Um, she got a grant to put this up on our bathroom. In our class recently, we got the opportunity to make a water catchment design, which would be built and to help at Mokuea. In our group, each person was given um, a job. So one person had to research the materials that we would use um, and how much because we had a budget. UH students came and some of the people that worked on Mokawea came and took a look at the designs and they chose the best ones out of the class. This project is important because I think Mokawea Island is one of the last places where in Hawaii how it used to be. It's important because we're able to still hold on to the past and show how important it is so they can have they can continue with living their lifestyle. It's always what we can do for her, not what we can get out of her. And we would like to be able to keep Mokowe for all generations to have it as an outdoor classroom. Yes. yes. This is Savannah Fernandez from Midlani Middle School for Hiki No. Aloha, and welcome to Kauai High School, located in Lihui on the Garden Island of Kauai. At Kauai High, a popular place for students to spend downtime is our courtyard, a lively place bustling with freshmen to seniors all coming together for the common purpose of sharing a meal or being with friends. One table, well known as the senior table, has for as long as anyone can seem to remember been the renowned hangout spot for, you guessed it, the seniors of our campus. Here, 12th graders sit and converse as they finally made it to their last year of high school before they enter the real world. Speaking of the real world, Brandon Marcos of our Kauai High School media class produced the following piece, addressing the biomass plant that has just been implemented on our island. What may seem like an act of deforestation is actually a benefit to the environment. Those trees are the fuel source for a renewable energy plant on Kauai. Basically what we're doing is we're taking some kind of a, a source of carbon material and we're burning it to make steam 
and then the steam is used to turn a turbine, and then the turbine is, turns the generator to create electricity. Despite being on an island in the middle of the Pacific, this biomass plant is taking the lead in green energy. It generates 12.5% of the island's electricity, enough to power 8,000 homes. As you know, oil is a, a product that is pumped out of the ground. We're trying to create a situation where Kauai, and in a larger sense, Hawaii, the state, we're not going to be held hostage to oil prices when that happens, and that's going to put us in a much better position. What makes this plant unique is that it is one of the first closed source biomass plants in the nation, which means it has its own supply of fuel, in this case, trees. Our company has control over the entire process. That's one of the benefits of, of us being closed source. This is like ground zero. We're, we're like leading the state, if not the nation, in, um, in renewable uh, energy. Employees are also working to chip away at the threat of invasive species. The main fuel source at the moment is Albizia. They squeeze out native uh, vegetation because of their canopy effect. They get blown down easily, um, so they take out power lines. They can also fall on people and, and kill people. We actually had uh, one of our own employees was killed by a falling branch of an Albizia tree just a few months ago. So the, these trees are really dangerous, so we think we're doing the, the island a benefit by getting rid of them. The plant's operation is designed to keep pollution and atmospheric damage to a minimum. There's something called uh, your carbon footprint. Basically what that is saying is how much CO2 are you liberating into the atmosphere through your activities. And if you take out the fact that we, we have to use diesel trucks to transport the fuel, we're actually carbon neutral, if not slightly carbon negative, which means that we're actually taking out a small amount of CO2. Work done at the plant allows employees to be optimistic for the future. I'm just excited about the possibilities and I, I hope everybody else is excited about the possibilities too. This is Brandon Marcos from Kauai High School for Hiki No. From this story of renewable energy on Kauai, we tap into the Hiki no archives for a story from Kauai's island school about a man who lives completely off the grid. I started paddling when I was 12 and, um, and sort of just slipped deeper and deeper into it till about the time I was 18 or 17 I was really putting all of my time into it. Um, and for about a five year period I was training probably, you know, up to 20 hours a week. Um, and that's like time on the water, not including commute and all of that. So my life was really focused around paddling. On October 10th, 2010, Luke Eslin's life was almost taken from him when the propeller of his escort boat tore through his back during the championship race between Molokai and Oahu. You know, after I got onto the boat and I was lying there on my back, um, thinking that I was bleeding to death or paralyzed or that my stomach had been ripped out of my body, um, you know, that's when, you know, your mind is going through a lot of stuff. And to me, that was sort of my transformative moment with those 45 minutes. And I would say the most, without a doubt, the most transformative 45 minutes of my life. So yeah, up until the accident, you know, I'm, I, my life plan was pretty clear. You know, I was um, at a business building canoes and I wanted to be, you know, one of the best paddlers in the world. Uh, and that's the direction I was going in. You know, something that I've sort of learned through this accident, you know, is this desire for more, you know, is that we don't always need more. Since the accident, Luke has focused on giving back to the environment through his off-the-grid sustainable farm. We, we have a piece of property, you know, and, and the goal is, is basically to reduce inputs um, or eliminate inputs is the ultimate goal and, um, and also outputs, you know, so every time we have a river that we have to cross to get to our property. So for me, that's like the, the barrier line. It's pretty obvious when I'm carrying something into that or carrying it out of that, you know? So normally in a property, you know, you're taking food in and taking trash out. Um, so I'm trying to minimize that, you know? So we, we produce our own electricity with photovoltaic panels. We um, catch our own water. Um, so there's no 
pipes or anything connecting us to the outside world. We have a really good existence right now where we're living. You know, we have six solar panels, which produces very little electricity, you know, and it means we can't, you know, turn our TV on at night if it hasn't been sunny or we can't wash our clothes, um, you know, unless it's beaming hot out. So, but that's fine with us, you know, and it makes us live with what we have. Um, and that sort of concept I've really applied to the rest of my life and especially our business, you know, and this idea of it's good where it's at, you know, and let's perfect this. Although still very involved in his business, Kamanu Composites, Luke Eslin has been able to find a balance between his career-driven lifestyle and his desire to reduce his impact on the planet. This is Gabriel Figueroa from Island School on Kauai, reporting for Hiki no. Welcome to Chief Iskumakahele Middle School, located in Lihue on the island of Kauai. CKMS is home to about 974 students, which means we have a very large campus. There are many places at our school to hang out, but there's one place that's a favorite. It's in each of our grade level houses. Each grade level has their own two-story house or building. Only students in that grade are allowed in their respective houses. There you can eat your snack, play on your electronic device, and socialize with friends. The following is a story made by two of our eighth graders featuring a family who created a bond through their need for speed. Twice a month, 15-year-old Tyrion Sakamoto rides in the fast lane. I started drag racing because I would watch other people race down the track and I thought it was fun. And a few years ago, I was able to try this sport and I fell in love with it. The sport of drag racing is where two vehicles race in a competition of speed in a straight line. Because of Tyrion's dedication to drag racing, her two younger siblings, Ryan and Rionce, were inspired to race. I love drag racing because it's fun and it's family or oriented. I love it because the adrenaline and it's so fun to go so fast. Drag racing is a family affair because of their father, Mr. Ryan Sakamoto, who started drag racing in 1990 and now passes down the torch to the new generation. Working with them with the cars and working with them every day, cleaning and teaching them the discipline of how to take care of stuff. Drag racing has brought my family closer because it involves a supportive pit crew that comes to help us as we race. We created a, a, a bond um, because it was something that they were interested in. The Sakamoto's compete at Kauai Raceway Park on the west side in Mana. Junior dragsters who range in age from 5 to 17 race one eighth of a mile. They say drag racing is fun, but it's also very dangerous, traveling at an average speed of 85 miles per hour. Well, drag racing, you need a lot of safety equipment. So you have a helmet, a neck brace, a fire suit, and race shoes. So when you race, the only thing, the only skin that you can see are your eyes. You're strapped in seat belts and arm restraints and everything. I learned that these cars are built very safe for the kids. They are safe in the car. The Sakamoto's have been very victorious over the years. My best memory might have to be when I got a perfect reaction on my first race. Perfect reaction is uh, when the light turns from yellow to green and the reaction time between the light turning yellow to green. The family bond that the Sakamoto's have takes their love for drag racing far. This is Colton Guzman from Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. More proof that Hawaii students Hikino can do.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo, and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.